Okay, well, I think we can um, get started. Welcome everyone to our fifth made summer web series session. Um, we're really, really excited to have Kenny Gold join us today. He's SVP Director of Social Media at Gray Advertising, and he's definitely one of the coolest speakers we know. Uh, he does really fun stuff at Gray um, with um, social media marketing, content, um, immersive marketing, gaming, all good stuff, really innovative, really creative. So I'm sure you guys will have a ton of questions. So um, as usual, just chat them in to the chat box. And we'll actually get to questions um, after Kenny does his presentation, um, and then he'll be there to, to answer all, all your questions. So um, before we get started, don't forget these sessions are open to everyone. So um, invite your friends. We'll be doing this all summer, so definitely feel free to share it out. And um, if you know someone who missed this session, we'll be recording it. It'll be posted at, on AEF.com, um, you know, by next week. So without further ado, let's kick it over to Kenny, who will talk about uh, social innovative advertising. Oh, he's muted. I'm muted. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. This is so cool. Um, that was a nice intro. I might have to bring you on the road with me whenever I talk, whenever we're allowed back on the road again. Okay, cool. Um, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so give me one sec. Don't mind my massive cra crazy desktop here. Can you all still hear me? Awesome. All right. Can everyone see the screen? Awesome. Okay. I'm looking at Sarah giving me thumbs up, so I know I'm good to go. Uh, alrighty. So, uh, why am I starting with a picture of Barack Obama? Uh, the, the reason is, oh, there we go. The reason I start with a picture of Barack Obama in almost every single presentation that I do is not because I'm inspired by him, which I am. Uh, it's mostly because uh, he had a rule when he would have a cabinet meeting. And I know that we're a few years removed from this, but he made every single cabinet secretary uh, put their blackberries in a basket with a little post-it note. And the reason why I always talk about that is um, if the secretary of defense can go an hour without his blackberry, so can all of you uh, without your iPhone. So I'm hoping you can pay attention uh, and, and learn something. I know this is an engaged bunch, um, so I have no doubt that you will be focused on all of the things that I have to tell you, even though, you know, there could be some other interesting things on the internet. So a little bit about me. Who is this guy virtually uh, standing in front of you? Well, that's me. Um, here, like any uh, decent creative, uh, I've built a mood board of, of my story. Um, I was born and raised in Wildwood Crest, New Jersey, which is at the southern tip of the state of New Jersey. I'm currently in Long Beach Island, New Jersey uh, at a family summer home where I am trying to escape the craziness of the city. Uh, you keep moving sort of clockwise. Uh, that's the overnight camp I went to. Everything important in my life that I learned, I learned from summer camp, whether it be team building or people skills or being a part of a unit, any of those types of things I learned there. Um, I was a child of early 90s comedy. So uh, that original, the cast of SNL from the 90s was really, you know, I wanted to be a part of that team. Uh, and it taught me a lot about being brave and wanting to get up in front of groups of people and talk and tell funny stories. Um, I'm from outside Philadelphia, so I'm a diehard Philadelphia sports fan. I went to the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I met a girl who now... Uh, 13 years later has been my wife for five years. Um, then I left uh, GW after graduation and I joined one of the most prestigious political consulting firms in the world called the Glover Park Group. Uh, built an entire background in political consulting, chased my wife to New York to be with her here, uh, transitioned from PR to advertising, joined McCann New York in 2013 at the very, 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 very beginning of their massive growth spurt and winning streak. 
uh, acquired a puppy who is uh, my little boy. I love him. Uh, did a quick stint at Burson Mars Stellar, which is now Burson Conan Wolf, uh, helping to run Bank of America Social, and then landed uh, at. I'm sorry, someone's doing the lawn work, so I'm going to close that. Hopefully, it's not too loud, um, which it is. Uh, so I apologize. Um, so from there, I joined Gray, where I really started to expand my. You know what? Hold on, everyone, for one second. Slight technical difficulty. We're closing the window. Sorry. Hopefully, that makes it quieter. I'm back. Sorry. Hi. Here I am. Um, so since joining Gray, I've been speaking on panels everywhere from Ad Week to Social Media Week. Uh, you know, I write. I write a lot of commentary, uh, whether it be in some of the trade pubs or ad week, and really love to put my perspective out there on the world. Um, I've worked on some ridiculously awesome campaigns. I got to send a margarita into space for Jose Cuervo. I got to help the New York Lottery try to find a missing millionaire with a stick figure. I made an entire advertising campaign about Mad Men because they were making fun of McCann. I helped relaunch MGM Resorts, which is one of the largest uh, hotel and entertainment brands in Las Vegas. Um, most recently, I don't know if you're on TikTok, but I spearheaded the program with Procter and Gamble, where we got Charlie D'Amelio to do the distance dance to help raise awareness about physical distancing among Gen Z. Uh, this past Super Bowl, we helped create social media programming that made Frank's the most talked about brand without a Super Bowl ad. That was last Super Bowl. This past Super Bowl, we did something very similar for Tums and uh, won the Twitter Brand Bowl Interception Award two years in a row. Uh, other cool things we've had the chance to do, we built a graveyard in our office and did a whole thing around Applebee's dollar drinks, which was a lot of fun. Um, but ultimately, the highlights, because I don't want to dwell too much on me, uh, head of social for Gray for North America. I've been a social and digital strategist for over 10 years. I've worked at three of the most awarded agencies in the advertising, PR, and public affairs space, represented over 20 of the Fortune 500. So uh, in the most humble way possible, I slightly know what I'm talking about. So let's talk a little bit about Gray. I'm gonna play this quick video for you. Uh, I apologize, the sound is kind of janky and it's gonna go through my microphone, uh, but this is a wide swipe of some of the stuff uh, my team does at Gray. fun. Uh, so let's learn a little bit now that I've hopefully successfully uh, put my credentials out there. Um, but let's go on a little journey. Uh, this is a hard one uh, because I don't really know how old everyone is. But um, does anybody know, and you can put it in the chat, I'll try and pop the chat up so I can see it. Um, does anybody here know how 
uh, when the movie Blade Runner was set. And you can just type it right into the chat if you think you know the answer. No takers, not one person. Okay, a couple people. 2020s, 2000. Okay. All right, well, I'll give everyone the answer. Why not? November of 2019. Um, and the, the reason why I always like to talk about that is because what seems like the future is actually now today. We are in what the, the vision of our future looked like. And uh, I'm going to take you on a journey of, of how consumers live their daily lives. And it's different for everyone, but you can see I'm now in Blade Runner. Um, you see my little picture there. As you can tell, I'm not an art director. Um, so... I wake up in, a mor in the morning and, and I turn to my nightstand and I say, uh, okay, Google, um, you know, turn off the alarm. It's my first touch point of the day. I grab my phone, I look and see, uh, you know, what kind of notifications I got, where did I spend some money, uh, where did I make some purchases. I, you know, And I ask him, what are the kids watching on Netflix? Because I can see that my whole queue is screwed up. Uh, you know, I might turn on a sporting event. Uh, you know, if I watch English Premier League, I'll put it on my iPad. Uh, I realize that I owe my, my parents some money, so I might shoot them over a little Venmo hit with some cash. Um, I open up my front door and I see that I've got some Amazon packages uh, I realize that my intramural uh, company softball team is going to be playing, so I have to look on an app to see when our game is scheduled for. I might take a stroll through Instagram and see what people are doing. Next thing you know, my wife and I are thinking about doing some renovations on a country house that we have, so we open up Pinterest. Um, you know, we got to go and pick up some stuff from the store, so I pop on Waze and I make sure that I know exactly where I'm going. You know, we, we arrive where we're going. We got to search for something, you know, in the shopping center. So we open up the app related to the shopping center. Then on the way home, we might throw on a podcast or something on Spotify. Uh, we get, uh, you know, we, we swing by my niece and nephew's soccer match. Uh, we go on Facebook and see some pictures from our friends. Uh, next thing you know, I check my Nest camera to make sure that nothing's happening in my house. I go and I set um, an alarm again with my Google Home. You know, maybe I want to order some delivery, so I put a, you put an order in through another app. You know, it's finally getting quiet at night, so my wife and I will sit down and watch something again on Netflix. And then when everyone goes to bed, you know, maybe I'll pop on a little Fortnite and play for a half hour on my PS4. And then again, I set my morning alarm. So. I interact with like 25 to 30 digital touch points in a given day. Uh, and so do all of you. I see, you know, there are very few people I can see at the bottom, but I see some head nodding because ultimately what we realized is advertising has evolved from focusing on TV, radio, print, and out of home, which were four touch points to exploding and becoming a part of a massive digital ecosystem. And I know you're all sitting there being like, well, duh, we know this already. And that's right, you guys are coming into the industry as digital natives and it gives you a unique advantage, but it also gives you the ability to really pinpoint from a nuanced perspective, what part of the digital ecosystem you wanna tackle and be a part of. So I'm gonna take you through the three major pillars of the evolution of advertising that I actually think are the most interesting and have the most potential moving forward to be the spaces where we as major advertisers are going to play. And it starts with something that I know actually very well, which is content and social, the medium and the message. So you are all in Gen Z, hate to break it to you. It comes with less baggage than being a millennial. I can tell you that firsthand, even though I'm an elder millennial, I still have all of uh, the baggage of being a millennial. And ultimately, what we've realized is Gen Z, all of you, are reshaping the marketing landscape in a way that is unprecedented since the launch of probably TV in the 50s and 60s. Our audiences are demanding a new approach. There's a flexibility in the channels that we use and the way that we can use them. So ultimately, what we know is 
content marketing in social is going to account for one third of the marketing spend by 2021. I'm going to go back to the chat for a second. Can anyone tell me how much money they think that means in global ad spend in 2021? Throw a figure out there of what you think it could be. I don't see any answers yet. Come on, give me a good guess. Two trillion. Sam, coming in hot. What else do we have? 500 million, 20 billion. Any more guesses? Okay. All right, here we go. 325 billion dollars in marketing spend for 2021 will be spent on content marketing. It's astronomical, it's massive. This is on platforms that did not exist 10 years ago. Evolution of the industry was rapid. So what we've learned as a result of that is there are principles that we need to be able to understand. And we start to decide if this is a part of the we want to make a foray into. The first one is, um, oh, my internet connection is unstable. Whew. My personality is far more stable, apparently, than my internet connection. Um, so there's a couple of principles here. The first one is co-creation across all platforms. The days of advertising agencies being the only people who create in a marketing space are over. If you think about the work I just did with Procter & Gamble, yes, P&G was the catalyst for the program, but Charlie was the creator. And that co-creation created a branded program. 10 years ago, that program would have been PNG or a PNG brand making something and putting it out into the world. We need to be able to work seamlessly and autonomously. So I'm going to say something and I don't want you to all to think I'm crazy. I made this deck well before Corona. So the fact that we have to be able to work seamlessly and autonomously, that is a must now. Our entire, our entire approach to how we connect and partner and create has changed. And uh, like, I, you know, not to pat myself on the back, we called it. We knew that we were going to need the ability to do this. So your ability to sit in your home and create content and think about strategies and work with teammates and be a part of that structure is critical because the, 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 the industry and in particular, our ability to create content for social requires us to be able to work with all the production barriers that are in front of us. And then uh, if you didn't attend Social Media Week last week, we did a panel all around uh, magic and logic and the balance of data and creativity. Content must be rooted in data. Social media is no longer a niche part of the industry. So if you have an analytical mind, the data of content is actually very critical in our ability to evolve the industry to take hold even further. You, it's not just social for social sake anymore. Our ability to really understand the why behind the what as well as the how it performed are really critical because as the marketing spend increases, our ability to actually put the rationale and the ROI behind why content is really critical. So if you are interested in content and you are interested in social, your knowing that you need to apply these principles might help you further hone where you want to work. Um, you know, it might give you a filter to start to think about where you're going from here. Immersive media. So this is kind of a dope little line here. So it's going beyond the screen into the dome, uh, which just sounds like it's really fun. Uh, and I want to put the dome on my dome. And um, I always, whenever I read this line, I'll go back to my little Wayne's World thing. Wayne says to Garth, "Stand still, Garth. This guy's going to put this thing on your melon." And that was in the that was in the early '90s. And every time I think about the dome, I think about someone's going to be putting something on my melon. Um, so uh, you know, I think about how there are 120 billion dollars being spent in the year to come on innovating and evolving the way that we engage with entertainment, retail, education, and activism. We are completely changing the way that these immersive experiences come to life. People are pining for more immersion. You are constantly trying to get deeper. You watch Money Heist on Netflix and you don't even want to wait to get the immersive behind the scenes look at how Money Heist was made. 
Uh, you, we watch more documentaries now than ever because we want to be immersed in the worlds that we are in. We love putting filters on and lenses and using augmented reality to help bring worlds deeper into our space. The NBA is working on doing what they're calling front court, which is the ability to strap on an Oculus and watch a live basketball game from the front row. And that was so ahead of its time. If you think now what they're dealing with, not, not able to have fans. Like the way that we need to leverage technology to drive immersion is becoming even more important now, especially given the realities of what's happening with COVID. Mixed reality is the new reality. You walk down the street and you look at the world in front of you, and especially those who live in, in urban environments, and you want to understand what's going on. You know, you put on... Uh, Bose AR headsets that are, uh, you know, sunglasses that are powered by Amazon or Google Glass, which was very far ahead of its time um, and, and really failed because of that. Uh, but you look around and you're like, you see a storefront and you don't just want to see the storefront. You want to know if something's on sale. You want to know what their specials are. You want to know what they'll be, you know, if there's a special product that they offer. Uh, if it's Cronuts, you want to know how long the line is without having to walk inside. You want to be able to place things that are not really there on top of things and layer things like Pompeii, where you literally are putting things in out there that make your world easier to interact with and give you more information. You pine for more uh, information. And then finally, when it comes to immersion, we claim to be really scared of artificial intelligence, but we are using it every single day of our lives and we actually demand it. When the content that shows up in our Facebook or Instagram feeds doesn't match what we're looking for, we're annoyed. What went wrong with the algorithm? Um, so there is an entire world that needs to be built in the marketing space that balances the strengths of, of artificial intelligence and our ability to layer new realities on top of the worlds that we live in. So you know, AR and VR are now leading into XR, which is that concept of sort of mixed reality. And then gaming. I'm going to open up the chat again really quick. And I want to know um, from everyone in the room, how many of you have played a game on any console, any game in the last week? So there are... 59 people here. So put a plus one if you, have, if you have played a game in the last week into the chat. Ah, Sam, always the outlier. We'll get to you at the end. <laughs> okay. I would say that probably 60% of you sent a plus one, which is a massive uh, amount of people. Um, this is an industry that is growing exponentially and faster than any other facet of the industry. $152 billion this year will be spent on gaming. All facets of gaming. Um, I will open up the chat one more time. How many people here, and you can put a heart in here if you can do it. Um, how many of you watched Travis Scott's concert on Fortnite? One person. Really? One person? Oh, a couple more. Okay. Okay. Family members did. Okay. So that represents an entire shift in the way that musicians and artists are thinking about pushing their content out. The days of going on a world tour could be over. This could be the new normal. Ultimately, Gaming is outstripping both film and music in terms of revenue. Gaming is the new frontier. Twitch as a platform has more daily viewers than HBO, Netflix, Netflix, ESPN, and CNN combined. That is a fact. Twitch is the new hot destination for content. 86% of global internet users play games on at least one device, whether it's a console, a PC, or a phone. And then that is going to increase to about 92% of... Uh, people, consumers, between the ages of 16 and 24. Uh, this represents a group of people, and you're in that group of people that are nearly impossible to reach through traditional marketing. So gaming is much, much bigger than the games you play. It's the platforms. So how are we going to be reaching you through your mobile gaming, through your console gaming, through your PC gaming? 
leveraging pro gamers as the new celebrities of the next generation, understanding that Candy Crush and Fortnite and World of Warcraft contain the same amount of power when it comes from a marketing perspective. And then ultimately, how do we tap into the community of people to, that are involved in the gaming space, whether it's ESL or live esports events, whatever it might be, and use those as opportunities as the new frontier. The uh, League of Legends playoff could potentially be bigger than the Super Bowl in five years. That is a crazy thought. Marketers are spending $8 million dollars on media alone without fear production to produce a 30 second TV spot during the Super Bowl. They could have an exponentially higher opportunity with the League of Legends playoffs in five years time. So understanding gaming as a facet of the marketing community is a critical, critical spot for any up and coming marketer or advertising student to understand. Ultimately, these things have a lot in common. We want to be driving conversation and brand building. There is something known as the currency of conversation. Um, you know, Gillette, which is a client of ours, did their spot, We Believe, uh, uh, which was all about uh, the effects of the Me Too movement on raising uh, really well-adjusted uh, young men of the future. Uh, how many people with a plus one in here have seen the We Believe Gillette TV spot? Okay, a lot of you. Good. So, oh, where did my little cursor go? One second. Just got to reclaim my cursor. There it is. So, what's very interesting about We Believe as a spot and, and Gillette's ability to push something like that out there the number one purchaser of razors, men's razors are women. I don't know if that's surprising to anyone, but you have to create content that appeals to the audience that is going to drive conversation behind your brand to help build your brand of the future. Uh, we have to learn from listening. The reason why I spoke about data being so important is if you don't hear what consumers are saying and you don't understand how they react to content, or an online video could be anywhere from four to eight weeks to three months to five months. The average length of an effective TikTok campaign is 72 hours. So if you don't listen in the comments, so we put out a video from Charlie and she reaches 54 million people. And after 72 hours, people start saying, I'm sick of seeing this video. We've reached our point where this is no longer effective. We want to inspire participation. The beauty of social media, content marketing, and these platforms on the whole is that for the first time in the history of advertising, they actually allow for two-way dialogue. Before, we were talking at people. Now we are talking to people to drive conversation. And then finally, fail fast, recover faster. Experiment and innovate. It is okay to fail and learn. Every year at Gray, we give out an award called the Heroic Failure Award, and it's for a campaign that a team within the agency ran at full speed and ran into a brick wall. And that is important because you learn more from failure than you do from success. So let's talk about what it's like to be a modern advertising professional. Uh, that is the marketing lesson part of the program. The next part's all about how to behave once you get the gig and, and how to get a job and how you can talk to me and all that kind of stuff. So um, when I think about people I want to hire, I want people who are interested in doing this. Social listening, audience profiling, developing a content strategy, writing briefs, thinking about content creation creatively and deploying it. Community management, it is important. Community management has been bastardized as a part of the industry as being where the junior people go. There is an art and elegance to community management that if you do it well, you can actually be quite successful. The community manager and guy who leads Twitter for Wendy's won a can lion last year. Like you can be successful as a community manager. Performance measurement, if you can't turn to your client or your boss and say, this piece of content led to this result, then it's social for social sake and it's not worth it. 
And then ultimately, we need to be able to plug the pipes back into the broader campaign integration and have that bigger blue sky thinking because that's where our breakthrough content really comes to life. So how do you get a job? How do you make the subtle transition from, you know, being one of the guys in Animal House to being Olivia Pope? Um, and I'm not here to lecture. I'm here to tell you that I made that transition myself. Um, I went from being the Belushi to attempting to be the Olivia Pope um, in offices all throughout Washington, D.C. and New York City. Um, here are some of the things that I always recommend. Intern, intern, intern. When you think you've interned enough, intern some more. If they won't pay you, do it for free. Um, you will learn so much by being at the ground level of some of these marketing organizations. Be willing to learn. You have to soak it all in. You have to listen. You have to be a sponge. Show up on time. I know we are younger. We like to sleep a little bit more than usual, but it is so critical to show that you care. And then at the end of it all, read. Read online, read on paper, read from diverse sources, put your phone down for a minute, read amazing things that are out there in the world. Read the classics. They're classic for a reason. They still hold up today. Read, 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 because when you read, you train your mind to learn more and think more and be more critical about the work that you put out in the world and it makes you better. Here are some things you should read. This is a moment in time that if you have a piece of paper with a pen or you are typing notes or you're using your phone or you wanna take a picture of something, take a picture of this. These are three books that I really think are worth reading. Made to Stick and Contagious are both ideas that are focused on how to create great ideas that catch on. And then The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck helps teach you what to care about, what not to care about in a world that is filled with too many things in front of you. Does anybody here in the chat notice something about all of these books? They are orange. They are. Does anyone know why? That's right. Color theory. Color theory. Yes, yes. It is not only a color that catches your eye. It is a color that inspires learning. And when you look at a book like this, you're going to learn. It, it trains your mind to want to think and learn. Um, so once you land the big role, here are the four things that I tell every single person on my team. First and foremost, be a team player, top to bottom. From me down to the most junior person to my boss all the way down, be a team player. Be willing to roll up your sleeves, do everything and anything, stay later, work harder, be smarter, because Teams succeed when you play together. Your team's success is your success and vice versa. ABL, always be learning. Educate yourself. Attend South by Southwest. Go to Social Media Week. Go to the Northside Festival. Audit classes. The industry is constantly changing. And if you don't learn, you will stand and you will be passed by other people who are willing to learn. If you are choosing between going on spring break or maybe going to South by Southwest virtually, it might be worthwhile to go to South by Southwest and learn something. If you are interested in possibly attending Social Media Week, it is, will be a roving thing. Social Media Week 1 is the latest way that they are doing it. They're putting out new content. Um, I, will, uh, you know, I will come up with some way to try and get you guys access to that. Um, think outside the box and be bold. Age is a number, and if you have an opinion, formulate it, support it with fact, and let it rip. Good ideas come from everywhere. The most junior, junior, junior creative teams can change the world. Um, the duo that came up with Fearless Girl, uh, Lizzie and Tali, who worked with me at McCann, um, they weren't the most senior creatives in the world, but they certainly now have the most talked about advertising campaign in the history of advertising. And don't burn bridges, build a network. I'm sure your parents have said that to you or teachers have said that to you. It is critical. I work at Gray now. My team has 10 people on it. Six of those people work for me at other agencies. You build bridges, you don't burn them. You build the network because you have to trust your team and work together to help make that come to life. So 
that is the end of the lesson from my end. I will take questions now, and I appreciate all of, uh, all of the organic engagement that you are giving me inside of the chat. But uh, I don't know, Sarah, if you want to read questions to me or how you want to do it, but. Absolutely. So we actually got a question during that I didn't want to miss. Um, Jin Yu is asking um, if, we sh if they should pay more attention um, to gaming and advertising on gaming platforms than other platforms and, and places. Hmm. Well, it all depends what you're interested in. I mean, you know, I think gaming platforms, just like social content platforms, are rising in speed. You can invest in two stocks at the same time. Um, they don't preclude you from one another. So spend your time learning against all of them uh, and you'll be able to excel. Also, just because you get the job doesn't mean you can't stop learning about those platforms. So it's not the end. Okay, and um, we got a bunch more questions in, hang on. Um, so do you think it's important to focus on marketing agency internships or experience in diverse industries that add to their eligibility to get hired? Uh, that's a good question. It depends what part of the industry you're going to go into. If you are going to be a creative, I don't know, Sarah, the, the diversity in terms of like who wants to be creative, a strategist, an account person, or this or that. All over. All over. Okay. If you are a creative, do something that's going to help you build your portfolio. You know, do Miami ad school, go to a portfolio program, make contacts within the network, find a partner, and try to get an internship within an agency. I think, in my opinion, that's the quickest. Um, if you're thinking about being a strategist or you're thinking about being an account person, there are principles you can learn from non-advertising uh, internships that can help you. I think something that's interesting about being a strategist is it's your job to understand culture and to be able to find tension within culture that helps lead to creativity. If you spend six months building wells in Rwanda, you learn something about water crisis and about um, you know global poverty and all these other things that are going on that could help you be a better strategist. Um, I personally worked in political communications. I worked in public relations. I worked you know they're different sides of the coin, but they all built a wide base of a pyramid that gets to the top of where I am now. So I think there are different ways to approach it and it's all based on your own personal journey. Okay. Um, Sarah Ring has a great question. Um, what are some strong projects to take on for the summer that can be equally as valuable as an internship? And I also just want to echo that uh, question just because so many people on here were unable to get an internship or had one and lost it because of the current crisis. So what are things they can do instead of interning? If you have a voice and you want people to hear your voice, find ways to tell your story. So Now's the perfect time to launch an Instagram feed or a Twitter account where you start to push out your voice and get out in the world. Um, if you've ever thought of a pursuit of starting your own business, start to understand now with the new realities of Corona, what you can do in today's world. Um, I think, you know, going out there and doing some good could be very helpful. This is almost like a post Pearl Harbor, like people put their lives on hold to enlist. Like, what can you do now in the face of this that shows that you're a better global citizen versus just constantly thinking about me and how I'm going to get my job? Um, so I think taking time to do good and, and understand what's going on in the world and be a part of the solution is always very helpful. I don't know if that was a good answer, but it made sense in my head. Great answer. I love it. Um, so Emily asked, uh, how do you balance creating timely social content while making sure it stays true to the brand's voice? Great question, Emily. Ah, oh, that is a fantastic question. We build content strategies that establish a brand voice and then we think about campaigns versus always on. It is important to tell your brand story through the context of culture. It is also important to put your point of view out there in the world. So based on who the brand is, what their product is, what's going on in culture and what channel they are on, we create formulas that help us understand where to do what and when and why. So it's all about striking the right balance. But like I said, listen to your audience because if you listen to them, they'll also help guide you in what they're interested in hearing. So for example, Wendy's will still push out two for one Baconators, but they will also jump in and talk about what's going on with The Bachelor because they know that they need to balance the push and pull of brand communication. 
Okay, awesome. Um, Abigail wants to know, what is the best way to stand out on a resume? Oh, Abigail, what a great question. Um, honestly, what I was talking about earlier about having interesting different experience is kind of cool. Um, our head of data strategy worked at the World Bank and she didn't work in advertising. Um, and you know, you, you, I think having interesting stories to tell kind of helps. I interned at NBC News uh, what feels like 100 years ago working for the show Meet the Press. To this day, it is a subnote of a multi-page resume, but it's the first question I get asked in almost every room I walk into. Um, so there's some interesting, uh, you know, having diverse experience helps you stand out. I think if you go down the, I went to Miami ad school, I interned at TBWA and Ogilvy, I did this, I did that, like it can feel very one note and there's something to be said for having deep advertising experience. But in an industry that is so rooted in understanding culture, I think having diverse cultural things in your background help. Okay. Uh, Niharika is asking what uh, online courses they can take uh, to take advantage of this time. Okay. Absolutely sign up for Social Media Week 1. 1,000%. 1, you go online, it's there. I believe there's even a full deep student discount. I think like the cheapest, cheapest one is like $1.99 maybe, which is really not that much money. Uh, I mean, it is a lot of money, but it's not a ton of money. It's not like South by where it's like 1300 bucks to go. Um, and I might even think there's some free stuff through your universities or wherever you belong to where they make that accessible. Social Media Week 1 is amazing. Um, follow Gary V. He's an interesting guy to follow and, and learn a little bit. You know, um, there's guys like uh, Amanda Gates from The Knot, uh, you know, Jack Appleby from RGA, uh, Matt Kobach, who runs social for the New York Stock Exchange. Um, me, you know, you can follow us online and learn a lot too. We talk about this stuff all the time. Um, but definitely something like a social media week one where there are hundreds of panels that you can watch once you get access to it, that will help you learn a ton. I'm also going to piggyback off of that and, uh, do a shameless plug here. Uh, you can go to our made online resource page and we actually have, um, a course that the ANA developed that covers everything from brand activation and creative briefs to data analytics. So definitely check that out as well. Um, you can do that, uh, during the summer, we'll be sending out uh, codes to sign up for that in the middle of June. So look out for that. Okay, next question. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, oh, my cat is joining here. Um, <laughs> okay, Nicole wants to know, as a rising senior, what would be some advice on making the most out of my last year in college to succeed in the advertising space? Oh, man. I remember what I wanted to do, and I turned out okay. Have fun. I know these times suck, but try and have fun and enjoy that you're, you know, read when you can. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You are not going to wake up one day after graduation and be successful. It's a journey. It takes time. You have ups and downs. So enjoy the moments that you can with school. You're never going to be back there again. Um, that will make you successful because you'll have experienced life and you can bring that to the table. Okay. Aaron wants to know, during this time, what would you suggest we do to build our skills and learn more about marketing? Follow great content creators. Okay. Watch YouTube videos. Watch the way that people create. Play, do something that makes you uncomfortable. Um, six months ago, I played, I never played a video game online. I only played like sports games. And I would play like threes or Candy Crush on my phone. And someone I worked with said, you know, we should really start getting into Fortnite and see if there's what the opportunities are. Now I'm playing Fortnite competitively and playing online and I've got the hang of it. And you have to make yourself uncomfortable. So um, try things, watch things, educate yourself, read. You'll be better. All right. Uh, Valeria wants to know, um, she just actually started her own startup in her country. Um, and how do you recommend... Uh, her to start making connections and approaching possible customers. I don't know what your startup is, so I don't know who your customers are. Um, here, 
Valeria, put into the chat what your startup does. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. How do you get customers? I don't know. <laughs> I think I did. No, but let's see. Thank you for a minute or so. All right. Uh, all right. We can go to the next one and then hopefully okay. she'll jump back in there. Okay. Um, Casey wants to know, um, what are your thoughts on new platforms like Quibi? Um, she read an article the other day that said one of its founders is not too happy with its performance right now, taking into account coronavirus. Yeah, Quibi. Um, it is a cool thought. It's an interesting app. I actually do kind of enjoy it. I was at uh, Meg Whitman and Jeffrey Katzenberg's keynote at CES in person and was able to see what was going on there. Um, it is an elegant thought. Um, they were banking on the power of high-end creative. And it is cool to see people innovate um, in style. But, you know, Google made Google Glass, and it was ahead of its time, and it flopped. You know, Vine was Vine, and now look at TikTok. Like, these platforms, they, they move in weird timing, and sometimes you nail it just right, sometimes you're too early, sometimes you're too late. Um, I think Quibi because of the amount of content they've created up front, because of the need to open up a different app and bring, and you know, sort of understand if it's the type of content for you, there's gonna be a learning curve. I think the jury is still out on Quibi. We probably won't know anything until about six months from now. Um, what the founder who came out and said they're not happy with the performance, they're doing the old school uh, move of trying to mitigate risk through negative PR. Um, so we'll see if it works. Um, but I don't have a great answer. I like it. I think the ads probably are a little weak right now. They're a little too pre-rolly for my liking, but um, we'll see how it evolves. Okay. Um, Zinyu is asking uh, on social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, uh, how many words should they use in an ad? And what should the style be like when the audience is diverse? Well, it really depends. Um, you know, are you talking about words on the visual or are you talking about words in the copy? If it's words on the visual, you can't have more than 20%. So uh, the 20% rule, it has now moved over to all the other platforms where they want you to be very careful about designing too much text on a visual. In terms of copy, uh, if you can communicate your message in less words, that's always great. I think less is more. Um, I believe the number is in a three minute Facebook content session. So one swipe through, you're engaging with about 165 individual pieces of content. Uh, so if your copy can't communicate quickly, you're screwed. Uh, so less is more. Okay. Julia doesn't have a question, but she does have a comment that she thinks it's crucial um, if you are a creative to take a digital marketing course. You will learn strategy and all that goes into social media campaigns. Plus, it gives you the ability to talk to an analyst, HR, and the paid media team. Okay. Thank you, Julia. Um, Sam Creek also has a comment. Strategists are the general spe specialist strategy for life. Oh, Sam. You love strategy, don't you? Sam, you better hit me up on LinkedIn, bud. I'm waiting <laughs> to see it. I'm, I'm planning on it. Don't worry. Okay, good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Duyen wants to know, um, for creatives, what makes someone an art director or design lead among many? How do you make your voice heard in a team? Craft. Hone your craft. Um, not everyone with a paintbrush is Picasso. Um, so you, you work hard and you focus and you get better and you listen to mentors and you listen to teachers and you have a unique perspective and you put it out in the world and you are maniacal about craft and quality. Okay. Michaela wants to know, where do you see the main intersections between gaming and social media? How could gaming better engage or use social and, and vice versa? Connected communities. 
Um, the, you know, all of these things, what they have in common is that they bring people together around the touch point and allow for them in, to engage with one another. Um, so I see the crossover and the ability to foster and grow connected communities. Okay. Haley wants to know, um, do you think having an MBA would be helpful for becoming a strategist? I don't know, Haley, spend that money and go around the world. <laughs> okay. So the answer is maybe. <laughs> the answer is I'm never going to tell someone not to go to school if they want to go to school, but um, I think an MBA can be pretty expensive and you might be able to generate more by going out in the world and seeing other things. If I told you, Haley, I don't know where you are. I don't see your picture down here. But if I told you that you could take the money that you were going to spend on an MBA and you were going to be able to go and live in two different countries for six months each and explore new cultures and learn new things. And let's say I told you that those two countries were China and Brazil. And then you came back after six months of living in those two countries and you were able to help Johnson and Johnson craft strategic programs to go and reach people your age in those countries. That might be more valuable to you than an MBA. Okay. Nora, um, does anyone suggest any good digital marketing courses online? Ask it one more time. Sorry, Sarah. Uh, are there any good digital marketing courses online that you would recommend? Yeah, I mean, I would go back and social media week one, Linda, um, you know, I heard rumors that South by is going to be digital this year. So um, there's plenty. AEF. Yep. <laughs> Do our course. It's free and open to all. Okay, um, Liam wants to know, um, for those of us doing remote internships this summer, how do you recommend getting the most out of it, given that we cannot go into the office and more naturally build connections? Create touch points to be seen and heard. So schedule meetings with people, even if it's for 10 minutes, value their time, come prepared with questions and thoughts, see how you can be helpful, make yourself seen, but don't be overbearing. Okay. Caroline, uh, great question here. What are your current favorite brands on social and why? Oh. <laughs> Caroline, thank you for the question. Um, I am obsessed with Steakums on Twitter. I think it's hysterical. Um, I, what else do I love? I love everything that Adidas does always and forever. Um, I'm a huge fan of what I'm trying to think. What else do I like? I hate montages. I'm so sick of montages. I don't ever want to see a montage on TV ever, ever, ever again. Um, what else do I like? Kettle One is doing some really cool adaptations of their hand-drawn programs. Um, so they did these like hand-drawn advertisements and they've tweaked them to work for today. So, there you go. There's a couple. Okay. Um, Tony Ann wants to know how you can leverage a career being both a creative and an analyst. Work in house. Don't work at an agency. Being multifaceted like that will do you better in house. Okay. Um, hang on a second here. Um, Robin asks, as a creative that feels drained by social media, how can I balance making a living creating art and using the internet to sustain that business? Any be best practices on using social media as an artist? Okay, so Robin, you're asking two questions there. Let's separate them. Uh, the first one is, you're looking for inspiration. You're sick of looking at your phone. So listen to music, find podcasts, read a book, Go out there and find your inspiration elsewhere. That being said, there are, and I'm, I'm, I'm breaking my own rule because I'm going to tell you some uh, follow accounts to follow. Um, look up someone, does anyone on here, plus one in the comments if you want. Um, do you follow But Like Maybe on Instagram? Anyone? Follow But Like Maybe. She's incredible. Like, she has found a way to use social to be an artist. You know, uh, I can't see my own camera to see if you can see what I'm showing you. But, like, 
she's a very unique style. She turned it into a book, stuff like that. Um, there's another one that I really like called um, Sad Animal Facts. If you, if you don't follow like Sad Animal Facts, that's a way to be, you know, there's a lot of ways to be an artist in this world. There's also a photographer. There's some cool photographer creators that I really like. Um, there are ways to be uh, an artist on social without, you know, reverting back to old tropes of like making advertising. You find your style and your voice and you deploy it that way. Okay. Casey wants to know, what's the best way to lay a strong foundation in AI with little to no experience with it? Read. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nicole wants to know, are there any advertising websites you recommend um, to be more informed and keep updated on the industry? Ad Week, Ad Age, Little Black Book, Campaign, The Drum, uh, Media Post. Follow Lindsay, follow Lindsay Stein on Campaign. Follow Ali from Campaign, Ali Marketeer. Uh, brilliant minds. Awesome, fun, interesting. Okay. Gabby um, doesn't have a question, but she is also recommending that everyone subscribe to Marketing Dive. It's a daily newsletter to learn all about different industries. So she gives the link there if you're interested. Um, Casey, again, coming in with a question. Um, what are your thoughts on HubSpot, Google Analytics, and Hootsuite and other certifications? Will they be as valuable three to five years from now, in your opinion? They can't hurt. And if you have time to do it, do it. I'm practicing being succinct with my answers or else I'll okay. need <laughs> That's good. We got a couple more. Um, Sam wants to know, how do you plan for the reactions and return to older media in the future? For example, while platforms and content are progressing, people are always trying to uh, go back to older tech um, like vinyls, eight tracks and other things. Ah. Those, that's about nostalgia. That is about rerouting in a time. Like people who go back to those mediums are trying to revert back to how they felt at a certain time. You can't prepare for that. Although I will tell you, if you are on Reddit and you listen to people and you join interesting communities, you can start to trend spot how these things are going to emerge and prepare better. Um, so I would say back to listening to your audience, go out there and listen to what people are saying and you should be able to trend and react accordingly. Okay, um, Valeria is back in the comments box here, and she talks a little bit about her business, which is um, based in Ecuador, and it is a delivery service or an online store similar to Amazon, um, where they deliver food and sanitary products so people don't get exposed to the virus. Um, they're trying to compete with supermarkets by being cheaper and giving discounts. Um, so she's in charge of marketing, but she's not really sure how to make connections. Uh, how can she approach customers without spamming people through Facebook and Instagram? Oh, that is a hard question. Um, let me think about it. I think, <laughs> I mean, a very elegant Instagram ad buy that creates connectivity and relevance to that market is the simplest way to do it. There is no silver bullet. Um, I think if you're out there on Twitter listening to what people are saying about struggling or needing help, you could, uh, you could go after a community management one-to-one -one approach, but it will take more time to build that community. Um, that's the best I can do without seeing any of the assets, seeing any of the profiles, understanding anything about the budget. Um, but I think, that would be uh, the, my two ways of thinking about it. Okay. And you can always connect with Kenny uh, after the session. You can see his LinkedIn profile is right there. So if you have any other questions. Uh, yes, I will do one. I will just say one thing about this slide. And I'm all about talking to all of you. Um, I promise I will respond as quickly as I can. That's number one. Number two, do not, do not, do not, do not just message me and ask me how to get a job. And 
do not, do not, do not just message me and ask me how to make you money. Um, I will start dialogues with you when I understand a bit about what you're trying to achieve, how you're trying to achieve it, what your ambition is, and try and help guide you through it. Um, and I will also put out a plug. I feel really bad saying this. I have no open roles on my team right now. The minute I do, um, I will make it public so that people will know. That's all of my caveats. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, follow me on LinkedIn, and connect, and we'll try as best as possible to connect with all of you. But keep going with the questions. Um, yeah, we I actually, Sarah, I just moved my two. So if there's, I have another 15 minutes if everyone has qu more questions. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yes. Thank you for doing that. Cause we do have a couple more. Um, so Aaron wants to know, um, since there, oops, I just stopped my sharing. Sorry. Hold yeah, on. That's no, no, that's perfect. Okay. Aaron wants to know if, um, since their internships got canceled this summer, how do you think they should approach recruiting in the future? Coronavirus did not just happen to you. <laughs> um, I think we are in a situation right now where everybody is acutely aware that this is happening to everyone. So it is not a blemish on your resume. It is not a, it's not indicative of your skill or your capability. To put it in perspective, 34,000 people in the United States lost their job in advertising in the month of April. That represents five percent of the u.s advertising industry so what i will tell you is be patient continue to learn and you will have your moment because the industry will open up again and we will need more people good awesome okay Saimira asks what are your thoughts on experiential or event marketing in the post-covid world i think people still want in-person experiences over digital ones i think about agencies such as giant spoon whose reputation are from their experiential campaigns. Samira, send me a message on LinkedIn. I will connect you with my colleague named Marie Kelly, who's our head of experiential, and she can talk to you all about the future of experiential marketing. Awesome, great. Um, Julia, would you consider Spotify a social platform? Absolutely, it's a connected community. Okay. Liam, no question, but uh, also recommended that people check out Slim Jim's Instagram. Yes, I agree, Liam. Good call. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sky follows that account that you mentioned before. Right? Sky, yeah. you got to buy her book. <laughs> Dude, I love it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, okay. Kevin is recommending... Uh, Codone, if you're into hip hop and rap, super cool artists on social media. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. There's a couple other Instagram recommendations in there if you guys want to check them out. Um, someone else, I don't, doesn't say their name, but they said that they're loving your responses and your energy. Just wanted you to know that. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Julia, try connecting with Justin Epstein on LinkedIn. He just posted an Excel sheet full of jobs and internships looking to hire. Cool. Okay. Let me know if there's any for me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then there's a couple other people wanting to connect. Tony Ann wants to connect with Valeria, so you guys can check each other out on LinkedIn. Um, I think that's it with questions. Everyone seems happy and like they enjoyed this session. I know I did. So uh, thank you for joining us. I know it's a beautiful day. So thank you for choosing to spend this hour with us inside. Um, you guys are awesome. Don't forget next Friday at 1 p.m. we have the Ad Council joining us and they're going to talk about all the really cool work they do about inspiring change in the world and helping people out and doing good through advertising. So it's a great session. Please join us for that. Um, and that's it. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn, Kenny, Sky, connect with each other. We love it. Bye, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>